Hey YouTube, it's Thomas here. So today I'm going to talk about the Elect Debut 2. This is uh, the B6. Now believe it or not, this is going to be one of the hardest speakers for me to talk about. For those of you who just want to hear me talk about the speaker, I just jump to the time link here. So I spent a lot of time thinking how I'm going to talk about these speakers. I'll think about it when I'm driving, I'll think about it when, I, when I'm mowing the lawn. And I'm going to touch on it as to why towards the end of the, uh, the video. So these days, when I bring stereo related stuff home, it must be for a very good reason. So for this ELAC, it is because it's designed by Andrew Jones. For those who don't know who he is, he's like a rock star in the stereo world. So he worked for companies like Kev, Tad, Pioneer. Uh, the good part is that he worked on very high-end speakers. So the R&D part, it's already done, meaning that he has the knowledge from designing very high-end speakers. Now I'm talking about speakers that are maybe 30, 50, 60,000 dollars old. So when people tell me, you know, people should not buy $30,000 speakers and feed the poor. One thing to neglect to consider is that the trickle-down technology from these high-end speakers benefit the mass. That is how technology improves. You will not find advanced speakers technology in North Korea, for example. Now, if we can agree that a big part of a speaker cost is in its development, then these speakers, although cheap in price, are not crap in performance because they skip the R&D part in its cost. So in fact, Andrew Jones mentioned that he wanted to bring what he learned from building the Adante speakers, the ELAC Adante. Uh, those are like the $4,000 to $8,000 zone speakers. And he wanted to bring it to uh, this uh, debut. So the ELAC debut version 2 has a 6.5 inch Aramid fiber woofer. If you look at it, it's nothing like the first version. In fact, I would argue that it's a completely different speaker. Debut is just, the only thing to have in similar is just the name, right? Basically, it's just a new speaker. So there's a dust cap on the woofer, making it more responsive. And unlike the first debut, the new one has additional bracing uh, install inside. So I guess to reduce uh, resonance. The overall construction is pretty good for something of this price range. The binding post at the back is pretty good quality and little details like this makes the speaker not feel cheap uh, it has a one inch silk dome tweeter and it's a welcome change compared to all the metallic tweeters which are found in a lot of the modern speakers now even though it's a silk dome uh, tweeter these uh, tweeter can go up to 35 kilohertz now before you say oh well we can't hear beyond the 22 kilohertz zone uh, you might want to read up on the advantages of a tweeter extending beyond the, the human hearing limit. So Andrew Jones made a good YouTube video on it with uh, Steve Guttenberg explaining one of the advantages. And I think one of it is that it extends both ways, up and down. And because it extends uh, down, uh, the crossover to the base region is better with these uh, tweeters compared to the first version. Finally, you have the port in the front. Uh, and this allows you to put the speaker close to the wall relative to a rear ported uh, speaker. Now, these are 6 ohm speakers and 87 dB, so they are not that easy to drive. Uh, oh, I forgot to mention, the, the port in the front, that's important because uh, Andrew Jones apparently, you know, uh, got feedback from the first debut, so he designed this uh, with the port in front, so it shows that he cares about uh, feedback. These goes for about $500 Canadian with the taxes, so they're, they're not expensive at all. I got this for 300 something actually in the used market. All this is nice on paper, but how does it really sound? So I'm not gonna lie, I was really excited about it when driving home. Uh, I keep telling myself, I, I picked them up for less than 400 bucks, keep my expectations in check, but because it's designed by Andrew Jones, I'm expecting a lot. So first second I got home, I plugged them in to my Macintosh 352. Uh, at the time I had the Bell Canto. Well, right now I'm running it with uh, Patos preamp and my Exasound uh, DAC. So for the test, uh, the first song I put to try the speaker was an audio file recording uh, song. So it's not realistic in the sense like, usually the recordings are not like this, but I, I wanted to hear it at its maximum potential. And the first five seconds, my jaw dropped. I was going, oh my gosh, these are freaking amazing. 
So I plugged in uh, a few normal budget speakers to, to this uh, high-end setup of mine, and usually they don't blow me away, but these did blow me away. And of course, uh, having my expectations kept, kept in check helped. Now these speakers sound nothing like the Elac Uni series. That's the Uni Fi series. First of all, the tweeters are brighter. It's in between the Uni Fi and the Kef LS50. Some would consider it perfect, right? Bright, but not too bright. However, for those who prefer the softness of the Elac Uni series, well, you will not find it in these speakers. The outcome with these uh, tweeters being a bit more bright is the clarity in the voice and it really stands out. Usually when I test budget speakers, uh, I look for uh, just one thing that stands out. In this case, it's the vocals. I don't know, is it the wide dispersion tweeter effect, but it almost feels like it's adding reverb to the voice. So if you've ever been to karaoke, you'll know that adding a bit of reverb or echo makes it sound so much better. If you sing without it, it, it sounds actually horrible. Also, because of the wide dispersion effect, uh, I don't really need to tow in the speakers and the soundstage does expand, pr expand pretty big for a bookshelf speaker. Imaging and separation, I would say the Uni F, uh, Unify ELAC is better. I would not say you, the ELAC Unify is the clear winner if you compare both speakers. But some people may actually prefer these because of its vocal clarity and more extended top end and even low end. You have a bigger woofer on these B6 after all, and these goes down to 44 hertz, and yeah, they're, they're pretty good. So the bass is good. In fact, I was using my um, iFi tube uh, with it, and it allows me to boost the bass. Uh, and when I set it to the maximum, I can actually feel the air pressure coming out from the front port. It's almost like having a, a subwoofer. It feels like that. Now, of course, its definition is a bit limited, meaning you can tell it's a bit muddy relative to the, the, the more high-end speakers I'm used to, but for the price, it's pretty impressive. I am actually very curious how the floor standing uh, version will, uh, with the extra woofer, it will sound like. So I spent the next few days listening to it and did not bother going back to my more expensive speakers. These are good enough to keep me entertained. So I invite my friends over and they all felt the voice clarity really stands out. I even did some A-B test uh, against the Kef LS50 and the Dying Audio 160 for my friends and I'll share my findings in the future video. So with all that said, why have I been struggling to make this video? I just told you guys, it's bloody amazing. Now, like any speaker, it has its strength and its flaw. The problem with the flaw is, is it really a flaw or the problem is with me? I wonder, am I trying too hard to find a flaw? So I was debating for weeks if I should mention this. As I tried searching the forums and read reviews, seeing has anyone mentioned this issue that I'm uh, I'm encountering. Nope, no one. So that's why I'm hesitant to talk about it. As any negative review, negativity in a review has 10 times more impact. I don't want anyone to get the wrong idea and not consider these speakers because of a comment I made. And it might not even be true. So, okay, so after thinking about it hard, I will mention this, but please take this with a grain of salt. You see, I hear micro distortions. Sometimes I feel like there's like 1% mucus stuck in the throat of the singer creating this distortion. I guess that's one way to describe it. And it comes and go. When I try to look for it, it's not there. But when I don't, it creeps up. So I asked my friends to listen for it and they can't hear it. Granted, they only heard maybe a few songs with it. Uh, another way to put it is like the speakers are string to the limit. I was thinking, no, you can't have the best speaker in its price range without pushing it to the limit. You know, like tone control, turn it high enough, you get distortion. So you turn it just a few percent lower to, the ma to its maximum before distortion kicks in. Now, I'm not sure this is a problem or it's just me because these are the cheapest speaker I've ever owned. Maybe I'm confusing between uh, micro distortion with uh, silky smoothness that I find in the speakers that I'm used to. And I'm used to speakers in at least the 4,000 zone. So I, I, I keep telling myself, maybe I'm not being fair. 
And in fact, I was so tempted to go out to buy another pair of uh, uh, cheap speaker just to compare. Okay, so once again, take this with a grain of salt. If you happen to have a pair and you have the same experience as me, can you guys leave a comment? Uh, if no one does, maybe then it's just me. So now, as I mentioned, these speakers sound amazing, but don't forget, I was driving them with some really expensive uh, front end. So I wonder how they would sound with a normal setup. What I did, I went out and I bought an all-in-one ArcCam Solo amp. Now this is a 50 watt, 8 ohm, at 8 ohm integrated amp with a built-in CD-ROM and even an FM tuner. In fact, you can actually even program it to wake you up with its clock. It has everything you need. So I figure, you know, in the real world, people would use something like this in this price range. The speaker and the amp cost me about 600 bucks. I also plugged it to uh, my computer Asus DAC uh, just to try a, a cheap DAC to go with it. So how do you sound in just a normal front end setup? Well, obviously not as good. It's just okay, not that exciting, uh, but good enough for me to listen to it for the next few days. So even with 50 watt, there are times where I still go like, wow, when the bass kicks in. So they're, although not that easy to drive, they're still pretty okay, even with 50 watts. Well, six ohms, they'll probably be running at 70 watts then. So that leads me to the question, who are these speakers for? 500 bucks. Can I get something better? In the used market, probably, because I was looking at speakers on the used market for around $300, uh, which is what I pay for these. And there are some nice, uh, I don't know, for example, Poke Audio full-size tower speakers that are in that price range. So I thought about it. If you are an audiophile and you're not the type who just chase after bass and want a bit more, then yes. In fact, I would choose these over my uh, PSB 6T full-size towers I used to own. Now, thinking back, even the Kef Q500, the Paradigm Monitor 7, version 7, the Dying Audio 3 slash 7 uh, that I used to own, they did not wow me when I first put them on. Now, it's possible because the front end was very different then, uh, and also the expectations. But I, I remember all those speakers, they, they never for once wow me. So, all of these ELAC wow me, it does need very good front end to do it. It's difficult for me to talk about these speakers. You know, first of all, the micro distortion problem that I probably I'm the only one who hears it. And if you take it home and you might be underwhelmed if your front end is not good enough. So let me wrap it up. So in fact, there are times in the last few weeks that for a moment, when I first turned them on, I feel like these speakers are giving me a slap on the face, making fun of me. Now, in the sense that they're so good that for 0 0.1 second, I would ask, I would tell myself, am I an idiot for spending money on getting all these $10,000 speakers? Of course, a $10,000 speakers will vastly outperform these. But the fact that it can make me think for 0 0.1 seconds tells you that they're that good. So if you take them home and they don't impress you, well, you know, spend $10,000 to upgrade your front end and I guarantee you'll be impressed. And if you think about it, guys, so these are $450 speakers, right? So it means that it costs them maybe about 70 bucks to build. 70 bucks to build, sell it to a distributor at 140 bucks, distributor sell it to a dealer for 280, and this dealer sell it to us for about 450. So I'm assuming that it's a distributor and I'm assuming, I'm speculating here, right? So for them to build a speaker that can perform like this for about, with material cost about 100 bucks, it's pretty incredible. All right, guys, I think, uh, I think I'll wrap it up at this point. Uh, any comments, feedback, just uh, leave it in the comment section.